Hey there, welcome to the 34th Easy JavaScript tutorial part of easyprogramming.net. In this tutorial, we're going to take a brief look at the math object. Not too many people like math, but math is fundamental in programming, whether you use it in your code or not. And JavaScript provides you with the math object to make it much easier for you. So let's take a look. Math object starts with the keyword math with a capital M. Remember that JavaScript is case sensitive, so the capital M does make a difference. The math object comes with a few constants, constants such as pi and e, Euler's number, uh, followed by a bunch of functions, also known as methods, that you can use on numbers that you've either generated or you've gotten from your users. And we're going to quickly go through everything that I've listed here. So math.pi and math.e, capital E and capital PI, are constants. Uh, when you input this in your code, uh, like for example, if I do it in my, there you go, math.e, it, it spews out just 2.718, etc. cetera. Uh, this is not something you can change. It's a constant. Same thing with math.pi. There you go, 3.141592. And the others are functions that you can use to on your own um, numbers that you have generated or gotten from your users or have calculated, etc. So we're going to go through a few of these. I'm going to go through seal, floor, and round, which are all rounding your number, uh, absolute, uh, power, which is really great for exponents, square root, minimum, maximum, and random. Stay tuned for the next controller. We're going to go into random a little bit more. So let's do some programming. So we're going to use the console, uh, the JavaScript console for all of our programming here. Let's just do something with mathpy. I've already done this. You've seen what it looks like in the JavaScript console. So if I run, you get mathpy equals to blah, blah, blah. Now let's do math. E. Uh, as you can see, I'm just copying and pasting because it's, it's a lot to cover. Uh, it's also very easy to understand. So I'm going to run. So math.py, math.e. Clear this out. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do math.round, even though I have it uh, down over here. But let me just do this. Then I'm going to explain what this means. So math.round takes a number that you've input. It doesn't have to be a straight number. It can be a variable. It can pass a variable to it. And it'll round to the nearest integer. So if it's less than 5, uh, it's going to go round down. If it's 5 or higher, it's going to round up, just like basic math. So if I run this, I get a 53. Math.round equals to 53. Now let's do math.seal. Sometimes, whoops. Clear our console. Sometimes you want to round up no matter what, whether it's a 0.25 or 0.0025. Sometimes you just need to round up because you can't have half a person, you can have a whole person. So let's run this. So math.round is 53, but math.seal, even though it's the same number, is a 54. Now let's take a look at the opposite, which is math.floor. I'm put a space here. So again, it's the same number. What math.floor does is it rounds down to the nearest integer. So even if you have 53.9999999, it's going to round down. And sometimes you need to do that if you want just the whole number and forget about the decimals. There you go, math.floor is a 53. Now let's look at absolute. If you understand how absolute values work, this is pretty easy. Uh, the, the thing is that it just tells you the, the integer at the absolute value, so if it's negative 53, the absolute value is going to be 53. If it's a positive 53, it's going to be 53. So let's run this. There you go. The absolute value is 53.25, even though it's a negative 53. That's how the absolute values work. Now let's look at power function. So we have math.pow. So math.pow takes two arguments. The first argument is the number. And the second argument is the exponent. So here, in this case, will be 10 to the fourth power. Uh, so I'm going to write in my comments 10 to the fourth. I'm sure you're used to seeing something like this. Even your calculator may even use this caret as uh, the exponent symbol. Let me clear that out. Run it. Here you go. 10,000. That looks about right. If I change this to, let's say, 10 to the tenth power, it's going to be a very big number. There you go. 10 zeros. The power function is extremely useful, and you may find yourself using this more than once. I'm just going to change this back to a 4 and clear this. The next we're going to look at is the square root. So we know the square root of 100 is going to be 10, of 25 is 5, etc. Uh, if you want, you can do the math you know, the long way. Uh, I, I'm really not sure how to do that, the math the long way, but SQRT, square root function, in the math object really does help you. So if I run this, 
there you go the square root of 100 is 10 okay we're almost done now we have min and max uh, people have asked me how do you get the minimum or the maximum in a given set of numbers so let's say you have user input who inputs you know like six or seven numbers and you need to get the lowest or the highest and you can do a map.min and in parentheses you put you pass in as many arguments as you need here I only included six you can have seven you can have eight uh, as far as I know there's no limit you're only limited by how much your browser can handle with this so there's nothing more special to the map.min function so if I update this run map.min the lowest number is negative 1000 remember negatives and next we're gonna cover is the math.max. I'm sorry I'm copying and pasting all this instead of typing, but like I said before, it's very easy to understand because you're just doing math dot the function followed by the R, followed by the arguments. Most of them take just one. Uh, math dot pow takes two. Math dot min and max takes as many as you want. Uh, max is the opposite of min, so here it gave me the here it gave me the lowest. Here's going to give me the highest. So if you guessed it's 100, you are correct. There you go. Now, the last thing we're going to do is math.random. Move this up. Math.random. So math.random doesn't take any parameters. It just generates a random number for you between 0 and 1, as I have in my comments listed below. So let's see what that looks like. So it gave me a 0.755, blah, blah, blah. If I clear this, clear this out, run it again. Give me 0 0.76. No, it's not incrementing. It's giving me 0 0.912. There you go. So that's all that does. You're probably wondering how do I use this to make a random number generator? What do I do with this long decimal point? What can I do with it? Well, come back to the 35th Easy JavaScript tutorial and I will show you how to create your own random number generator in JavaScript. So I hope the math object has been useful to you. Uh, we will use this in the next tutorial, so come back for that. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Remember, visit easyprogramming.net. Have a good one.